uh, to us uh, one way or another, hopefully soon. Uh, after the introduction of uh, the president of uh, the European Investment Bank, uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Hoyer, uh, I believe uh, there is no need for me to go into much more details about the bank itself. Of course, later in the Q&A session, we can, uh, of course, uh, if needed, discuss and elaborate about the bank and the EIB group consisting of a subsidiary also, European Investment Fund and all our endeavors. But uh, as today, uh, today's topic in, in your agenda is uh, green and digital transformation, green and digital uh, recovery of the European economy, uh, I would, uh, of course, uh, like to, to focus uh, on this specific uh, topic in, in elaborating much more uh, details, because, uh, as, as I said, in these exceptional times, the gravity of the COVID-19 pandemic is still unfolding. And we are all required to take necessary steps to uh, to cushion the health and economic follow-up. Um, but while uh, this is already a, a daunting challenge per se, we have to think and we have to plan for for the recovery and for the for our future in a sustainable manner, because we have to be decisive about the principles that will guide us. The pandemic has uh, has led us to rethink many aspects of our lives, and we must turn it into a defining moment in, in our fight against uh, climate change, environmental degradation, along with uh, with all efforts and then challenging with uh, for uh, for for a sustainable recovery. The standing point, as I said, is quite challenging. Uh, the investment uh, horizon has been vastly shattered across the EU because of direct and indirect effects of the lockdown restrictions. Uh, our, our, economic, uh, our economists in the bank, our team, uh, produced a special uh, EIB investment report for 2020 to 2021. Uh, which estimates that uh, uh, the, the investment contraction was mostly felt only in the second quarter of 2020 when the investments uh, fell by 90% compared to the previous year. So without any doubt, we, uh, how we pick up from this bottom depends on the policy responses, national one and also uh, global European ones as well. Uh, however, we, we need to, to wisely set the priorities so that uh, we set on a prompt uh, yet smart and inclusive recovery, uh, recovery path. As, as we all say, and we have this kind of a European motto, the future is green and digital, as it is also pointed in the, in the motto of the existing Portuguese presidency of the council, time to deliver a fair green and digital recovery. Uh, I do believe that uh, if we embark uh, on the right path, we also alleviate the social constraints and build a fair future for, for all uh, in the continent. We need to transform the way our economies work by investing heavily in new technologies, skills, and infrastructure, and all entailing climate mitigation and climate adaptation. We have to replace uh, lost jobs with sustainable and socially inclusive uh, economic activities, adapted and resilient to, to climate challenges. I believe the EU should constitute uh, an important player of the post-crisis economic architecture in order to ensure a better coordination among uh, the market players, but also mobilizing sufficient resources, which is not only to show, but more importantly, to lead the new growth strategy, as the European Green Deal is supposed to be. We must be ambition, ambitious when it comes to our future, in particular regarding the green transition. Europe embarked on green path long before the pandemic. So, so did uh, the bank, the European Investment Bank. Since 2012, uh, the EIB has provided almost 200 billion of finance supporting investment in 
environmental sustainability projects, climate action projects, at the, at the amount of more than uh, overall total amount of overall 670 billion euro. This has made uh, uh, our bank one of the world largest multilateral providers of finance for projects supporting this objective. Only last year, 40% of our financing was, uh, was deployed to support green projects out of, uh, out of the total amount of uh, almost 70 billion. A year ago, uh, we as European Investment Bank Group, together with our subsidiary EIF, announced uh, our intention to transform uh, the bank into an EU climate bank. This represented, as already President mentioned, a giant step in our ambition to contribute to the transition to carbon neutrality and increase climate resilience. To make this happen, we have set uh, ourselves three uh, high-level uh, operational goals. Firstly, the, the EAB uh, will dramatically, seriously increase its level of support to climate action and sustain, uh, sustain, uh, environmental sustainability investment. Half of our overall annual lending volume, 50% of our annual lending volume, which I, I mentioned is around usually 70 billion per year, will, go, will be invested into climate action and environment investments of 2025 and beyond. Secondly, we aim to support and to mobilize 1 trillion euro of green investments over the critical decade ahead of us. And third, finally, uh, everything we do as of this year is aligned with the goals and with the principles of the Paris Agreement. So we, we intend and we will put climate, climate dimension in everything we do. And we will be rigorous about it. Uh, as EU Climate Bank, uh, it could make no sense for us, for the EAB group, to support the Paris Agreement with 50% of our finance if at the same time some of the, the other 50% of our lending undermine the low carbon go goals. Therefore, in line with the principle of sustainable finance, we will ensure that all our finance projects do no, not the, do no significant harm to the low carbon and climate resilient, resilience uh, goals of the agreement. The ambition, this is a serious ambition, uh, will entail huge changes uh, and also challenges with this. Uh, at the EAB group level, we, we, we will have to accelerate our green financing activities to reach our ambitious goals set by our shareholders but uh, we have a solid foundation to build on. Uh, as, in, as, uh, as the bank, as we are the inventor of green bonds, already in 2007, we have been instrumental in the development of the green capital market. Since, uh, its first, uh, uh, since that first issuance, we have supplied more than 33 billion euros of climate awareness bonds as we call our green bonds, are uh, all allocated to climate change mitigation investments. More recently, we have pioneered sustainability awareness bonds, uh, the, the proceeds of which contribute to environmental and social sustainability objectives. Financial markets have evolved rapidly over last years so that uh, green investments could, uh, could flourish. We have contributed actively uh, to the development of the EU sustainable finance uh, taxonomy and to the draft uh, EU green bond standard. This is a voluntary standard, uh, which is really indeed very important step toward uh, a wider and yet more transparent uh, green bond uh, market. What does this uh, transformation really mean for, for the economy and for the public policy? Climate action requires serious uh, structural changes and it implies tremendous investment. In Europe, to achieve the 2030 greenhouse gases uh, reduction target alone, we need uh, an estimated amount of 350 
and 50 billion euro of additional investments on annual basis on the top of what we've been doing as of today. That is a double digit increase compared to, to, to current total investment level. So we must deliver uh, an abundance of uh, low, uh, low cost renewable power, for example. Uh, we have to uh, to support uh, uh, electrification of the transport. We have to improve uh, the energy efficiency in everything we do. We need to develop and to deploy uh, low carbon uh, energy carriers with clean hydrogen being the, the current front runner in that field. And decarbonizing energy uh, intensive industries is also a very important priority and the only way to achieve it is through the, uh, through the application of new technologies. All these actions require massive investments also in research and development. With the next generation EU or the recovery package, uh, the reinforcements to the, to the European budget and also by us, EAB, um, uh, in addition to, to this, uh, European Green Deal in its ambitions plan is also backed by, by I should say, unprecedented public financial firepower. Um, yet volume is not the only important uh, requirement. We must focus on the quality of each investment on, and on each investment's impact. Because there are important questions which we need really very carefully to analyze before we decide on the implementation of specific projects or, or plans. Uh, we, the EAB group, we welcome very much the Next Generation EU program and in particular its main pillar, recovery, the new recovery and resilience facility, which, is, uh, uh, which aims to support investments and structural reforms in all member states. At the same time, uh, we believe that we need to better integrate uh, the transport and transport systems, energy sector and digital sectors in order to, to help uh, uh, EU to achieve its climate objectives. Therefore, uh, we support the two horizontal investment uh, priorities of, uh, of, of the RRF, of the uh, Recovery and Resilience Facility, with 37% uh, with for climate action and 20% for investments in uh, digital transition, digital transformation and, and, and connectivity, which is in line with the, with the overall objective. Uh, in, in this vein, we, we also very much welcome the, the possible combination of InvestEU for connecting Europe facility with the recovery and resilience uh, instruments because in, in that way, we, we believe that uh, a complementarity and leverage effect could be, uh, uh, could be, could be of benefit. However, implementing the, the RRF raises numerous challenges for the member states, especially time constraints, also absorption, the ability, the absorption capacity of, of the fund. And, 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 and last but not least, uh, the, the, the efficient and effective uh, way how these investments are done and really achieving effective reforms as, uh, as a result of, of this huge investment. Given uh, our, our banks and our group's expertise, uh, we, we believe we are a natural partner for the member states, both in the finalization of their recovery and resilience plans and also in supporting member states and their beneficiaries in their implementation. For instance, uh, through providing uh, our advisory services and also supporting the development and the creation of financial instruments to be funded we, out of the recovery and resilience, resilience funds, including through contributions to invest in your member state compartment. This is, this is a unique opportunity. Maybe it sounds a little bit complicated, but this is, this is indeed an opportunity to overcome time constraints and absorption capacity in, together. Uh, 
next to, to possible tailored financing and advisory support for, for the member states under the RRF, we are also closely cooperating with the European Commission services on the analysis of country and sector specific investment barriers. Our research shows uh, the long term uh, impact of, of COVID-19 with 50% of companies expecting increased use of digital technology. Uh, it also demonstrates a persisting and large gap between Europe and U United States, US companies regarding the use of digital technology. Within the EU, a reliable digital infrastructure still remains a challenge, especially in the rural area. We are currently working on a bank-wide goal for a 20% digitalization share under all uh, public policy goals and eligibilities, which we will apply and we have in the bank. Recovery and resilience for fund and funding uh, and our engagement uh, to deploy InvestEU are fully complemented. Both instruments have different goals, different implementation modalities, different executing ex entities, but if implemented correctly, in complementarity, uh, they, they should be able to reinforce each other to uh, RRF as a short-term recovery instrument that addresses uh, the, the economic impact of the COVID, COVID pandemic in the member states, while the InvestEU is a mid-term and more specifically maybe long-term uh, instrument and program assisting the member states and, uh, and business uh, to uh, member states to modernize their, their economies, to put them back on track uh, for uh, and to ensure sustainable growth, while also addressing the, 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 the key challenges which we are discussing today, green and digital transformation and transition on the path of uh, economic recovery. The scale of the decarbonization challenges calls not only uh, for involvement of both public and private uh, stakeholders, but also for a closer cooperation among the public uh, sector entities and all involved in the process. Better alignment definitely is needed. Horizon Europe is of course key to enabling uh, this increase in investment in climate mitigation. The initiatives of uh, EU institutions and all member states may, or all member states are critically complementary with private sector investment because neither party will be able to achieve the needed scale of investment by its own on its own. Um, Europe is a global, global uh, leader in green innovation and even more in innovation, both in, in digital and uh, in green for, for decades. Uh, without that, Horizon Europe will play a key role to, to broaden these competitive advantages going forward. As an accelerator of ideas, Horizon Europe will, uh, will add the, the tailwind to the recovery uh, and set it on a green and digital and inclusive path. Uh, it, uh, it should be underlined uh, also that, uh, the, that climate change is more than a European issue. It's a human issue. Europe accounts for less than 10% of global emissions. So we will only defeat this pandemic by working together at the international level too. The same goals for, 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 for the fight uh, against climate change together with the, with the overall global economic recovery. A key element in, in all this is the transatlantic teamwork that has uh, ensured peace and prosperity in Europe for so many decades. China recently announced commitment to decarbonize by 2060 and the US president Joe Biden decision to bring United States back to the Paris uh, Agreement are clearly very positive development, recent development. This means that countries responsible for producing half 
of the global greenhouse gas emissions are part of, of this, this uh, important uh, exercise. And of course, here I would include the European Union uh, as we are on our path to a net, uh, net zero continent. With the election of the of the president Biden, uh, we can uh, we can pick up where we were left off. We have so much to gain from uh, a very close cooperation with the United States. European strategic autonomy and transatlantic partnership are not contradictory. Uh, as as uh, this this is so often suggested, one requires the other. Let me stress uh, that solidarity and partnership, uh, partnerships will be indispensable. Therefore, climate will be central to our strategy, global operations, and also cooperation, strong cooperation with all others. We are expanding the scope and the reach out uh, of, uh, of our partnership. To maximize uh, our global impact, we are uh, we are ready to partner with with others, not just as an incubator of uh, for finance, but also as an incubator of uh, for knowledge and ideas that could drive the uh, the transition to low carbon environment. We are ready to help uh, others step up their their uh, efforts to through a tailor made technical and advisory uh, support which we are able to provide to, to cities and uh, regions and governments and different authorities. This is something with which we are indeed unique with our in-house engineers, climate and uh, other experts which are able to provide this, this very specialized, very tailor-made technical, financial uh, uh, and advisory support for preparation and implementation of, of, of the project. As the EU Climate Bank, we are not just financing the development of the cutting edge climate technologies in Europe, but we are actively contributing to the implementation of the goals of the Paris Agreement worldwide. We are investing in, in each continent. The success in combining environmental sustainability and improved social development will be measured by the capacity to reach out to communities, those communities who are affected by conflict, fragility, migration. Uh, and this brings me to, to the end of my intervention. Uh, in conclusion, for a true recovery, the resources available, and this time we do have resources available, I could say, huge resources, there. they must be spent efficiently and wisely, and with a very clear long-term vision in mind. This will allow us to introduce the deep structural shifts in our economies that are absolutely necessary. It would also demonstrate to the younger generation that, that we have heard your, their concerns for the future, thus providing social solidarity. With these words, um, I will stop here in order to, to have enough uh, time and opportunity also to questions, uh, comments or discussions uh, on your side on this topic and, or in maybe any other topic related to what we are doing here in the bank. Thank you very much for your attention so far and I'm looking forward to your comments and discussions. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Pavlova, for your words. Uh, it is very appreciated as a very uh, detailed description of what the uh, bank is doing. Uh, especially that uh, once uh, there is money from a bank for a green transformation, it means that it becomes real because uh, uh, when something is only in politics and is not financed, is much less uh, uh, probable that will be fully implemented. So thank you very much for your presentation. I do not have uh, at this moment st some students' reaction, but I have my own questions to you. Uh, is the first question would be, uh, but please, if you feel uh, or that you want to raise a question, you know, give me a sign. Uh, uh, my first question is that I've got a few more. Uh, 
is related to the fact that uh, uh, we have uh, um, many investment needs and the EIB is concentrating on green uh, uh, investments. And uh, in the meantime, you've got also other possibilities of financing green investments. Even in a generation, new generation fund, uh, you've got a loan component for financing also green investments, but also from other sources. And as this is very demanding uh, investment, uh, do you have sufficient amount of projects uh, that could be financed? And whether you need to support of what you have been saying about uh, supporting, uh, 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 supporting uh, those potential uh, uh, potential involved in a technical uh, uh, um, elaboration of projects. So, for example, Jaspers, what Jaspers is uh, doing in this respect. Uh, uh, the second issue is that uh, uh, we had a discussion on taxonomy when man, uh, where many elements were uh, uh, included and very clear policy. But is there any difference between what bank uh, considered as a considering as a green investment and between those what is what has been discussed in the uh, on the European Commission proposal, or is it precisely the same type of approach? Especially here, there are two elements which are controversial. One is gas uh, uh, and financing of uh, gas projects, and other is nuclear energy. Uh, which is also a controversial component uh, in a discussion what is green economy. Uh, that is on my side. I've got already some other questions from students. So if you would like to answer now, uh, uh, maybe for that, and we'll move to a few next questions. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, maybe I, I could, uh, uh, I could uh, re respond to your questions, and then we can move forward with, uh, with the other questions. Mm, as I already mentioned, it's very, very well uh, pointed also in your question. Uh, as I said, now we do have a lot of uh, investment opportunities and, and funds available, both from grant uh, sources, but also from uh, from the different financial instruments and uh, opportunity to borrow at, uh, at extremely uh, favorable conditions. So funds are available. And as I said, that is why we are, uh, we are we are pleading that there is a need to have a, a very sustainable long-term efficient plan on how we invest all those resources because i should say for a, this time maybe uh, we we are we're not questioning the the amount of um, funds there there are plenty of them but really the idea is to how to have leverage effect and how to to ensure complementarity between the different instruments and this is uh, this is the, the biggest challenge. And here to your specific questions on uh, do we have sufficient amount of projects? Well, unfortunately, the, the, the short answer is not so much. And I will tell you why. Because with the, with the, with the seriously boosted and increased uh, amounts uh, which were agreed and provided within the um, with the, within the reinforced multi-annual financial framework together with the next generation EU and specifically the recovery and resilience uh, instruments, the amount of grants available now is really huge. And But the timeline this time is very limited one. So that is why we are already in, in contact with, uh, with many member states or regional authorities who contacted us as well, um, asking for our support in preparing the plans or finalizing the plans on one side in order indeed to have a, a strong um, a strong uh, pipeline of projects uh, project ideas and then also in helping them preparing those projects because we know very well that uh, in order to prepare a bankable or or even a, a project which is which is implementable one, it takes time, effort, and investments, and resources, and also capacity. And, and last but not least, also to guide those who, are, who don't have enough uh, and the necessary capacity in the, to guide them in the, in the implementation of those specific projects. So, uh, so uh, as I said, our in-house capacity for both financial and technical advisory, Jasper's teams on the site, already are working 
maybe the demand is higher than we can immediately address. And that's why I said now we are facing a challenging period when we have resources, we don't have maybe enough projects, we are ready to support and to help member states and regions to, to prepare them. But then it's a matter of procurement, which sometimes is delayed. Then it's a matter of timely implementation within a very short time period. That is why what we offer on the top in, in order to support countries who when, whenever planning and calculating the, the amounts and the different projects, um, we are offering this uh, based on our long lasting experience that some of the recovery and resilience funds should not be used only as a direct grant investment in infrastructure or in any other project which is to be planned, but also to establish financial instruments to create some funds. By creating those funds, then the, 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 and attracting and uh, additional private, for example, financing our co-financing, this will enable to establish a fund which will have much longer uh, maturity and which will have the opportunity even after the expiry of the recovery and resilience facility to have already an instrument in support of, for example, digitalization of, of SMEs and, and different companies in support in uh, industrial mm, uh, in, in, in different different industries, not only industrial, different different industries, not or recovery and transformation, uh, with with the goals of the Paris agree, uh, Agreement. So this is this is uh, our proposal on how to mitigate some of the the serious challenges we are all facing. On your second question on the green investments and the definitions uh, to be used and to be applied. Well, being the EU bank, of course, we are and we, we all have to be aligned with the overall EU taxonomy, EU green taxonomy. That is why I mentioned that uh, our experts were um, important part of the working groups and task forces supporting and uh, really providing the necessary support and expertise in drafting and finalizing the EU taxonomy. Because if we want to be able to achieve targets, we need to have good legislation and, and equal definitions and criteria, especially with the banks, with the banking sector. So this is what we have uh, provided and worked for. So I believe that now, uh, more or less, we can say that we 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 can we can start with equal uh, with equal requirements and definitions because it will, at the end of the day, enable us. To, to measure the investment and the impact of those of those investments. Of course, uh, as, as you mentioned, there are some elements on, on which uh, we still uh, we still see and we still uh, face some um, different opinions. This, this is the these are the investments in, in gas infrastructure and also investments in nuclear infrastructure. These are still um, topics and components on which we uh, at European level, there is there is no uh, clear consensus on those investments. We as a, as a climate bank uh, have decided, our board has decided uh, as of the, the end of last year uh, that we are phasing out investments in gas uh, in, in a way uh, to, to support and to streamline the process of, of, of the transformation. Uh, on nuclear, uh, our energy lending policy, which was updated in order to comply with, with, our, uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the European Green Deal goals and with our objective, our really ambitious objectives, is not, is not touching upon nuclear. Why? As you, as you said, there is no consensus at EU level. But anyway, we here in the bank have not financed any new nuclear uh, facilities or plants for decades. What, however, what we can and we will will still be able to finance is the the transformation of existing uh, of existing nuclear nuclear power plants in their in their way uh, way to to modernize. In security measures and then different different types of investments still. Maybe I will stop here so to have enough time also for I see in the chat that there are some colleagues willing to ask questions. 
Uh, that's right. Uh, we've got few students, uh, so I will give uh, opportunity to Bianca to put the question. Bianca, please. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Bianca Petre and uh, I'm Romanian. Thank you very much for this uh, interesting insight regarding the activity of the European Investment Bank. I would have one question. So we have seen that increasingly more EU funding is uh, set to be deployed to EU member states and regions in the current programming period in order to support the digital and green transitions. My question relates to the national capacities of absorbing these funds, especially in the countries of Central and Eastern Europe, which have historically struggled um, in this regard. So, could you further please elaborate on how does the EIB intend to uh, support a more efficient absorption of EU funding and shift from investment in uh, physical infrastructure only? And maybe what is your uh, own view on this country a specific challenge of implementing um, high quality investment projects? Thank you very much. Can we collect other questions too? Uh, well, uh, could we take one by one? Maybe it will be easier. No problem. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Uh, as, as, as you might know, I'm coming from Bulgaria, so uh, share knowing very well uh, the regions, the Balkan regions, and the, the challenges of the latest uh, acceded member states uh, uh, too. Uh, and here in the bank, being in charge for cohesion policy investments and for advisory services, I could uh, I could say yes, indeed, uh, we 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 can say that uh, in, in the newer member states we still have those two issues uh, which you very very rightly mentioned. One is the the absorption capacities and also capacity to 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 develop and to prepare uh, a good good quality projects. And, and secondly, also, which is absolutely normal, being uh, cohesion countries and some of the less developed regions in Europe, uh, our primary objectives so far were uh, to prioritize investments in basic infrastructure, transport infrastructure, environment infrastructure, in order to enable the, the country to uh, to catch up with uh, with. Uh, uh, with the other European countries, but at the same time, uh, it is it is obvious that still there is a huge gap, and the investment need in infrastructure persists, and they are there. Now we are grateful, and we should be grateful that additional funding and resources and were reinforced specifically for this. However, this time this is not enough. Specifically now, when we face, uh, I should say, three challenges: economic recovery climate uh, climate adaptation with the old challenge of the less developed regions really and huge investment gaps there we need to think wisely and strategically that that is why even here now in the bank we are revising our strategy on our cohesion investment how to provide more additionality and support to cohesion regions with special focus on less developed regions and the uh, uh, the analysis show that the only way to to support those regions is not only to invest in infrastructure, but also to invest in innovation. And when I say innovations, we should very uh, openly say we, we should not only address very new, highest, newest technologies. What we need in Europe, in this in cohesion regions, in less developed regions, is to invest all available and maybe already invested in implemented new in, uh, innovative technologies in, in Central Europe and in more advanced countries, but to allow to have this more flexible, uh, even eligibility criteria and criteria for innovative investments, because this is the only way to boost uh, the, the GDP and the growth of, of those regions. So, uh, and that is why I believe that indeed the capacity, I won't repeat, uh, of our teams, uh, advisory, financial and technical, is there to support. Uh, our uh, our strongest uh, Jasper team for which is for for Eastern uh, uh, Europe um, support of the of all countries is in Romania and Bucharest and from there we sent our experts uh, in supporting and preparing projects and I do believe that this is this is an excellent excellent uh, lesson learned a very positive lesson learned from the previous period that why that is why it was reinforced and now with the increased 
reinforced capacity, uh, the JASPERS teams and others will be uh, now focusing a lot also on the implementation of the JUST transition. Because JUST transition with the three pillars, the fund um, and, the, and the, all the elements of the JUST transition will also have to be deployed timely and wisely in those coal, coal mine uh, the dependent regions. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think you have been right because time is passing so quickly, so we have to maybe accumulate all the questions, unless you've got a bit of time yourself to spend a bit more than, but I see that uh, maybe it's better to accumulate all the questions and uh, uh, I've got three students willing to, to put to your questions, so we'll take three questions now. Let, let's so, have the questions now, please. So I will try to, to, to yeah. either combine or respond, to, of course, to each and every one of them. Very good. So the first question is by Asalin. As, yes, yeah. As, Astin El Habasi from yeah. Austria. Thank you very much oh, yeah. for this very interesting uh, speech. Um, I want to follow up on the question uh, made by Mr. Uh, Pietras. Um, regarding the taxonomy, so do I understand it correctly that the EIB for its pledges uh, to dedicate uh, a certain percentage for green investments will not um, exclusively use the taxonomy because um, that would be interesting and in particular because I think uh, for this huge investment gap that uh, everyone is uh, clear that we have, we need some huge infrastructure investments um, in areas that are not covered in the taxonomy. So be it uh, nuclear, which is the very highly discussed, but also less discussed, for example, infrastructure for hydrogen um, pipelines um, or um, e-mobility infrastructure, which is also not uh, directly covered um, in the taxonomy as far as I know. So you contributed very much to this work, but will you also apply the taxonomy in the end um, for your uh, pledges? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for these questions. The next one comes from Andrea. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for all of uh, this speech. Uh, my question is very, very close actually to Asdin's one and still on uh, the, um, the assessment of sustainability of projects and uh, the choice of investments. Uh, I would rather focus on the application of taxonomy because as I understood, you, you apply in certain sense the taxonomy, but I would like to understand how do you apply that? Uh, like, for example, we know that taxonomy is a list of economic activities. So basically, the loans are deemed as by the European Investment Bank as sustainable if they concern a sustainable economic activity or if the company is operating, is majorly operating in uh, sustainable economic activities or both. I mean, con concretely, how, how this sustainability is assessed basically using the taxonomy, because there are different ways in which one can interpret the taxonomy in assessing the sustainability of a project, rather than the sustainability of a project, rather than the sustainability of a company, maybe both. Uh, and this is my question. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next is from Thomas. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, very insightful speech, uh, especially about the, the taxonomy and the capacity of absorption of the member states. Uh, I was uh, specifically wondering, uh, so you, you mentioned both uh, green and digital projects, and I was, uh, I was wondering how is the, the IB uh, is uh, assessing the, potentially the, the interdependencies between both and the, the potential rebound effect uh, uh, sparked by the, by especially by the digital um, digital projects, and what uh, would be your views on that? Thank you very much. Well, we've got another uh, first question, please, Natalia. Natalia. Um, hello, Mr. Pavlova. Thank you very much, Mrs. Pavlova. Thank you very much for a very insightful um, presentation. My question will be about your opinion. Um, on the um, recovery plans, given the deb actual debate on the um, uh, level of ambition of these plans, but also taking into account the time constraints. Thank you very much. So now floor is to you. If you could answer these questions, uh, it might be uh, quite uh, time demanding, but uh, please try to, to make it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I, I, will, I would really try. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, and inspired that we, you're really indeed interested about the, the issue of taxonomy because, uh, as you all said, as I said, this is this is indeed important and, and crucial. Uh, 
uh, the, uh, very briefly, yes, we are going to apply and we are applying the EU taxonomy. What uh, I was saying that based on our en energy lending policy and based on our climate bank roadmap, we are now adapting now uh, and we shall be able to adapt uh, all our uh, rules and eligibilities on how we finance a specifically project and how uh, uh, we, we apply this. And, uh, and also this refinery here, I refer also to the, to the question of, uh, of Andrea, how the assessment of sustainability of activities of projects of companies will be done. Because uh, uh, as, you write it, uh, as, as you rightly pointed out, uh, there are some uh, some projects, and it's uh, it should be also considered on a, on a case by case basis sometimes, because depending on the investment, de depending on the, the on the demand and on the specific uh, project, or if the project is part of a, of any special uh, facility or just is is a standalone project, we are usually uh, assessing both sustainability of the project and sustainability of the company, but it, it differs and it, it, it varies. Coming back again to, to, to gas and to nuclear, what I said, we are uh, we are not financing new because our board is not uh, supporting this, uh, uh, this kind of new investment in nuclear so far. This was the, 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 the agreement reached. However, we are able, if part of the of the plan is uh, uh, to, to make sure for for security, for security, safety, and sustainability issues, and certain specific investments to be done in, in existing nuclear plant. This this might this might continue because it is as it is in line with the Euro taxonomy. Also on gas, existing gas power plants, existing gas infrastructure, important part of our investment will be indeed um, the the transformation, the adaptation of those uh, uh, gas uh, power plants or any infrastructure uh, to be adapted for hydrogen uh, and for, for hybrid technology. So there, this we will continue applying and we will continue financing those. What we are phasing out is uh, the, the financing of, uh, of a gas power plants, creation of those. But any kind of adaptation, transformation of existing to new technologies is you know, is part of, of, of our investment uh, eligibilities. Uh, on um, on the on the interdependence of uh, between uh, green and digital. Yes, we are a climate bank, but along with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, with our climate ambitions and climate bank roadmap, we are uh, we are still and we continue still uh, of other different investments with the remaining fifty percent of our. Uh, of, uh, uh, of our annual uh, budget and allocations, digital transformation, uh, it, is, it is now a, a, an important uh, priority as, as a result of the crisis. Demand in, in uh, digital infrastructure, digital adaptation is higher and higher. And then this is an area where we are, of course, uh, even envisaging new new facilities and new new instruments in order to support it, but uh, the, there is there is uh, indeed uh, significant and serious interdependence between those those investments too. Uh, and uh, and to the last point of of Natalia of uh, on the opinion on RRF plans, the level of ambition. Well, so far we 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 saw uh, the the number of countries. Who have already submitted their draft plans. The other are, the others are coming. But what we can see is that uh, based on this, on one side limited time period, but huge amount. What we what we can see is this is of course as a uh, initial initial uh, vision and idea that some of the countries, since they don't have enough projects as we have already discussed, they include in their plans. Not only projects which are a must, which are the top priority, or which are really the the main the main drivers for for, for economic uh, recovery or development, or that, but we also see that uh, some countries tend to to put their all projects which we put in the categ category nice to be or nice to have. Uh, so that is why I think that now European Commission and uh, of course we are also available to support while re reviewing those plans might request serious uh, how to say serious uh, amendments because uh, with the with the time uh, with the with the limited time period 
uh, in order to boost economic recovery combined with the, with the digital and and, um, and green ambitions we uh, uh, each each member state should be able to prioritize in in those projects which in, which in combination in, in complementarity as a coherent approach will be able to 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 address the three challenges not just because of the, the huge amounts and funds available to put any any nice to have a nice to be project. So this this will be the challenge, I believe, in the for the next couple of uh, weeks or months uh, in the negotiations with, with each and every uh, country and member state on how how to precise the, the, the pipeline of projects, because sometimes we we might uh, we might see projects which are not relevant specifically for, for the instrument and for the purpose of the recovery and resilience instrument. Uh, which, which was initially announced. So, um, honestly speaking, uh, I think that uh, the, the level of ambition, as you as you as you point the question, but also the 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 efficiency and the impact of, of the projects of some of the projects is still to be assessed, and either they have to be revised or maybe maybe moved to 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 the long term implementation uh, projects uh, part of the operational programs financed within the multiannual financial framework or with our with other instruments. But this is, of course, my my personal opinion for the moment. Let's see how how it will go. Thank you very much. It was a very fascinating uh, discussion, and I think uh, oh, we you are not uh, the first in uh, the role of uh, people speaking on uh, banking uh, and elements of financing in these particular times. Yesterday, we have been told by uh, uh, at least two gentlemen, uh, including Gabriel Glockler from the uh, European Central Bank, that there is a plenty of money. And you are obviously delivering also additional financing capacity uh, for a change. Uh, as a matter of fact, it also raises a question uh, in times of very low interest rates in a normally general economy, and uh, the private banks can also finance many things because uh, if you have a bankable project uh, which will be easily repaid, what is the difference between financing from a private sources and from the European Investment Bank? But uh, I mean, uh, depending whether you have a time, you could ad advertise. If I would be investor, why I should turn to you for money, not to the consortium of a private bank? Thank you. Of course, uh, I will be happy to, to respond uh, very, very briefly. Well, I should say that being not only a bank, but because EIB is a unique, uh, unique uh, institution, I should say. On one side, we are European institution, so we follow and uh, we are follow uh, the European policies and objectives. As uh, we, I don't like this uh, this expression, but as colleagues here in the back saying, we are not policy makers, but we are policy takers. Uh, I should say uh, that uh, with with our investments, we uh, we accelerate and we are unable we are enabling uh, the implementation of different policies and instruments, for which are uh, which could not be uh, covered or should not be covered covered only with with grant uh, elements and instruments, but also should be co-financed uh, based uh, based on um, on specific cost benefit analysis. And what uh, what we are unique about is indeed that we are providing uh, free uh, technical advisory with with the support of the European funds on one side and uh, and financial advisory, but also we do have favorable conditions. Whenever we approve a project, first of all, is a stamp of excellence because we do apply very high standards. Whenever appraising a project, we do apply the highest standards and requirements. So once the project has been assessed and approved by the EAP, then going back to the market, going back to the private sector, because each project has to be co-financed uh, and it could not be financed 100% uh, by us, then it's much easier for the promoter to attract and to get at favor uh, at, at good position easier uh, private co-financing or private contribution uh, and participation of the project. And, and last but not least, we do offer much more favorable condition than the, the normal commercial banks because we can now allow, allow our, ourselves to have much longer tenors, tenors, 10, 20, 30 years 
sometimes for, for specific infrastructure at, at, at really favorable conditions. So this is what is making us uh, unique and this is really the benefit of, of engaging first with us and then attracting the different companies ourselves. Thank you very much. On behalf of all students, those sitting here in the room, uh, which is uh, limited because of the conditions, and those sitting uh, uh, or attending online, uh, I, would, I would like to thank you very much for your uh, uh, very informative presentation. It was very nice to hear what you were uh, saying about the bank and the explanation that you have given. So, thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much. For... It was indeed my great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And now we've got a break, coffee break. Uh, so we'll, we will turn uh, uh, to, you could take your coffee. And also there are some cakes. Those who are present here can enjoy cookies uh, cooked by Sisi. So uh, if, uh, if it is uh, not good enough for entertainment, I could tell you they are very tasty. So thank you very much uh, and uh, see you back in the room uh, after coffee break. Attending online, those who are attending online, if they would like to come to the room, there are still some places, so uh, you may leave your beds uh, and uh, 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 if you have already taken shower, you could come here.